This will be on uh, sequences <coughs> of continuous functions and similar and some other topics as well. A Lipschitz continuous function is one that satisfies uh, this property here. And uh, these are very important in differential equations. Now, every Lipschitz function is uniformly continuous because if you're given an epsilon, just let delta equal to epsilon over k, and then you'd have an epsilon, uh, this would be smaller than epsilon over k, k's would cancel, this would be smaller than epsilon. So any pair of points, x and y, if they're closer than this delta, then the difference between f of x and f of y will be less than epsilon. So that's what it means to be uniformly continuous. Um, if you have x sub n <coughs> minus y sub n converges to 0, and x sub n is converging to z, show that y sub n converges to z also. Well, that's rather easy because y sub n minus z in magnitude or absolute value less than or equal to this plus this, uh, <coughs> that's by the triangle inequality. And now for large n, this is very small. And for large n, this is very small. Therefore, this is small. So yes, this, uh, this is true. <coughs> Now, suppose you look at uh, this function. It is uniformly continuous if you look at all the values of x bigger than 1. And here's why. If I take this minus this, it's equal to this, and that's smaller than that. So in fact, it's Lipschitz continuous on this interval here. Uh, just let delta equal epsilon. Now, if you had restricted to uh, some positive, everything bigger than a positive number, it would work exactly the same way, except over here you'd have 1 over delta squared times absolute x minus y. But it would still be Lipschitz con uh, continuous on this set. Okay, if f is uniformly continuous, it does follow that absolute value of x is also, because if you take absolute value of absolute value of f of x minus absolute value of f of y, by the triangle inequality, this is less than or equal to that. And so if you have a delta that works for epsilon uh, in f, then it also works for absolute value of f. But if you know that the absolute value is uniformly continuous, you can't even say that the function is continuous. Because you could look at this example here, which is discontinuous everywhere. It's not continuous at any point. Uh, but if you look at its absolute value, the absolute value of f at x is always equal to 1, and that's as continuous as it gets. Okay, a lower semi-continuous function is one whose graph looks like this. The value of the function is smaller than the lim-inf of the uh, sequence f of x sub n whenever x sub n converges to x. So you see, that's, that's the kind of thing that this illustrates. Because if you have x sub n converging to x, say, from the left, then if you look at the lem nth, you're going to be picking up this point here. And that's bigger than the, the value of the function, which is down here. Similarly, if it converges from the right, you'd be picking up this for the lem nth. The value of the function is down here. So this is a picture of what a lower semi-continuous function could look like. It's not continuous, but it's lower semi-continuous. Now, um, suppose d is sequentially compact and f is lower semi-continuous. Then it achieves its minimum. Why? <clears throat> well, let lambda be the infimum of all of this. It could be, right now, as far as we know, it could be negative infinity. It won't be, but that's a possibility when you write this down. So now what I'll do is I'll let f of x sub n converge to lambda. Now I know I can do that because this is the infimum of all these values. So that means there must be a sequence of these that converges to lambda. So uh, by compactness, there is a subsequence that converges to a point in d because this is sequentially compact. 
And so the f of that subsequence also converges to lambda. And now f of x is less than or equal to the lem inf of this. And uh, why did I write it? Oh, yeah, that's the, that's the limit because this was converging. And that's lambda. OK, but you cannot get f of x any smaller than the infimum. Therefore, f of x must equal to this infimum. OK, if you have a function, it's upper semi-continuous if you turn it around. So you'd have f of x bigger than or equal to the lem soup. So this one, if I put this dot here, the value of the function, if I put it way up here, then I'd be looking at an upper semi-continuous function. Okay, but the property is the value of the function is bigger than or equal to that. Now, if you have a sequentially compact set and f is upper semi-continuous at every point, show that f achieves its maximum. Well, it's exactly the same as the preceding problem, except in, in place of a minimizing sequence, you use a maximizing sequence. OK, show that a real valued function is continuous if and only if it's both upper and lower semi-continuous. OK, now from the definition, the limit of a function exists exactly, uh, well, the limit of a sequence exists exactly when the lem inf is equal to the lem soup. And when these two are equal, they are the limit. That comes right from the definition. So if the function is both upper and lower semi-continuous, then if x sub n converges to x, you know that f of x is less than or equal to this, which is less than or equal to this, because the lem soup is always at least as big as the lem nth. And that is smaller than or equal to f of x because of the upper semi-continuity. So this and this are at the two ends. Therefore, these are equal. Therefore, the limit exists and equals f of x. So that would say that the function is continuous at x. OK? Now, on the other hand, if the function is continuous, then whenever x sub n goes to x, converges to x, it follows that you have this. Well, when the limit exists, it's the same as the lem inf and the lem soup. And so the condition is satisfied, and f is both upper and lower semi-continuous. Now, here's an, find an example of a lower semi-continuous function which is not continuous. Well, of course, here's a picture of one up here, right? But we can give an explicit description rather easily. Uh, let f of x be 1 if x is not 0. Let f of 0 be minus 20. It's not continuous, but it is lower semi-continuous. If you want an upper semi-continuous example, just look at negative f. So it would be 20, and it would be negative 1 everywhere except 0. But it would be 20 at 0. OK, now this is a rather significant observation. If you have a collection of continuous functions and you take the infimum of them, you end up with an upper semi-continuous function. So let's show why that is. Suppose you have x sub n converges to x. Then the lem soup of f of x sub n is less than or equal to the lem soup of f sub alpha. So I just picked one of the f sub alphas there. OK, uh, and that'll be bigger than the infimum. So this is certainly true. Now, since it's continuous, this would be equal to f sub alpha of x. And now what I'll do is take the infimum over all alpha of these. And that gives me f of x here bigger than or equal to the lim soup of f of x sub n. So that shows you that that the, if you take the uh, infimum of continuous functions, you always get an upper semi-continuous function. Now, in fact, you see here, all I really needed was to have each of these be 
uh, what? Upper semi-continuous. So if I take the infimum of upper semi-continuous functions, I would get an upper semi-continuous function. Okay, so let's let x sub n goes to x, uh, lim inf of g of x sub n, bigger than or equal to that, which is equal to that. Now take the supremum to get this, and so g is upper semi-continuous. And again, if I had that f sub alpha, each f sub alpha were uh, lower semi-continuous, this would work, okay? So these are, these are, this is quite an, uh, a significant observation. See, I think we, we saw examples of situations where the limit of functions, uh, continuous functions, turned out to be something that wasn't continuous, okay? But in, in the, um, in the chapter, okay? All right, um, let's see, why is this continuous? Well, because it's a composition of continuous functions. Suppose now that you have a function that is defined on the natural numbers, then I claim it is uniformly continuous on the natural numbers. Why? Well, that delta will be less than one-tenth and bigger than zero, of course. Then if x minus y is less than delta, and both are in the natural numbers, then there's the same integer. And so the absolute value of their difference is less than epsilon because it's zero. So it's uniformly continuous. And notice it did not matter how I defined it. Okay, so now what we're going to do is stop and we'll consider limits of functions now.